I want to help people. I want to do good for other people. What's so bad about that? Nothing. If you do it by your own choice, and if it's not your primary aim in life, and if you don't regard it as a moral virtue, on those conditions, it's fine to help people if you want to. Why, isn't, why can't I think of it as a moral virtue? I mean, can't I take some vows for myself for doing all these good things? Because that would be cannibalism. Because that would mean that you preach altruism, which means not merely kindness, but self-sacrifice. It means that you place the welfare of others above your own. That you live for others for the sake of helping them, and that justifies your life. That's immoral, according to my morality. Uh, I don't understand why you have to be so harsh in your, def in your evaluation of those people. Why, why call it immoral? Why don't you just say, why, why don't you say it's a waste of time? Why, why pass judgment on me? Because look at the state of the world today. Yeah. And you cannot be harsh enough on those who created it. And those who created it are the philosophers of altruism. It's those who preach self-sacrifice, selflessness, self-abnegation, all the anti-self theories, which means anti-man. All those who demand man's sacrifice, they have succeeded, and look at the results in the world. That's a, that's a theory or a way of life or an, a philosophic idea which is, which is advanced by religions. That we should sacrifice for others. That's right. All right. I want to make sure I understand you, Miss Rand. Why is it so... I'm still not quite sure why you're so harsh on those who would sacrifice for other people. Because I look at them. Just look at them. Because they are... They don't hesitate to sacrifice whole nations. Uh, look at Russia. Communism is based on altruism. Look at Nazi Germany. The Nazis were more explicit than even the Russians in preaching self-sacrifice and altruism and self-sacrifice for the state, for the folk, the people. Every dictatorship is based on altruism. Now you can't fight it by merely saying it's a difference of opinion, it's a difference of life and death. Your, so your view is then with, if we all became more comfortable which, with our natural uh, tendencies, that is to say, selfishness, there would be less horror, less war, less Hitler? There wouldn't be any. So with the more selfish we are, the more kind, the, the, the more tranquil and peaceful the world in which we live? And more benevolent toward other people, if we're rationally selfish. By that I mean a selfishness which can justify one's every action rationally, not the kind of whim worship as I call it, which consists of just indulging your own desires and but, urges of the moment. And there is no innate natural idea, you know. There isn't, huh? No. Well, I have an innate, I have a lot of innate tendencies. You think they're innate. You know what I would say? <laughs> check your premises. Check my premises? Yeah. Check the basic ideas behind any feelings that you might feel at the moment and you'll see that your feeling comes from your premises, good or bad, but they held subconsciously, they will direct your feelings and you will think it's an innate, right. but it isn't. How do you avoid, let's take your thesis then and accept it now, I'm going to be selfish. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to be real talented and charismatic and I'm going to develop a lot of wealth and I'm going to have a lot of money and a lot of banks and pretty soon nobody's going to be able to compete with me because I've already purchased all my competitors. And now I have dictatorial power over people, and I can name the price of bacon or price of oil or whatever it is, the commodity I'm selling. You know, I agree with you that you're very talented, and you could accomplish a great deal and already have, but you're talking about the impossible. In a free society, nobody can become a monopolist or a dictator. The system itself, the free market, will destroy you. How, how do you explain mobile oil? Exxon. How do you explain the prices that they're able to charge for? I think that they're stupid appeasers who get too little and put up with too much. Who? The oil companies? Yes. You, you now, just here you have to let me explain. All right. If 
President Carter's own policy admits that we need the oil company and that the lack of oil is a serious national crisis right. which might lead to the stoppage of all industry. If that is what we need, by what right can we tell those men, go ahead and produce what we want while we're insulting you, while we're trying to control your business, and while you're, we're not leaving you that which you produced? Today, it's crudely obvious, if we need the oil companies, we have only one of two choices. Either we produce oil ourselves, and no government has ever done it or can do it. Or we have to accept the oil company's terms, pay them whatever they can get. The more they get, the more credit to them, because that means the country needs it and pays them. They have produced something needed by the people. And we must say thank you instead of putting a, or proposing to put a tax on them in order to give the money to the government who does nothing. The government doesn't contribute anything except impediments. All right. But if we allow the oil companies to, to have the power which you say has come to them because we need the oil, it's a question of supply and demand. Yes. So if we approach this laissez-faire, as I think you would like us to, free of government intervention, right. free of all the force and the regulation and the controls which you abhor. Right. All right. Now we've got Mr. Gigantic Oil Baron saying, $2.50 a barrel, a, a, a gallon. Now, here's what happens. The guy, the blue-collar guy who's trying to make a living and feed his kids, can't buy gas for his truck, can't possibly survive in the free marketplace, and suddenly he's on welfare, and he's got to go for a handout, another feature of government that you abhor. You can't have it both ways. But all this is economic fallacies. To begin with, nobody in a free society, now we're talking about the free market, yeah. in which the government doesn't interfere, nobody can become a monopolist. All monopolies are created by a special privilege for government. It's only by an act of government that you can keep competitors out of your field. Therefore, you couldn't become that kind of monopoly. The power you hold as an industrialist is not the power to use force. It's the power of producing something of value. That people want. And it's the people who literally control you because every purchase is a vote in the favor of some businessmen and in a way against others. It's the public who decides what they want to buy and what they pass up. If, using your examples, you became this powerful tycoon economically, yeah. but you can as an industrialist, it's not the power to use force. It's the power of producing something of value. That people want. And it's the people who literally control you because every purchase is a vote in the favor of some businessmen and in a way against others. It's the public who decides what they want to buy and what they pass up. If I, using your examples, you became this powerful tycoon economically, but you cannot force anybody to deal with you, and you cannot force competitors out of your field, then every smaller man would be in that field because you would have established a price way above the market. You might last a month if that. So in other words, if I tried to be Mr. Big and charge outrageously high prices for, for gasoline... Wrong. I would go broke, in your view, because in your leave them alone and let competition handle it approach to civilization, somebody with a smarter, with a better mousetrap, pardon my mixed metaphor. No, well, that's a very good one. All right. Would come along and undercut me. That's right. Sell at a cheaper price. But is isn't just my view. You know what I'll do? I'll buy him up the minute I see this bird. I'll buy him. I'll own him and on Tuesday. And where will you get your money when you're not I'm already allowed... already holding them up for $2.50 a gallon. But they're not paying you. You say they're all going out of business. They've got to get to work. We're married to a petroleum uh, civilization. All right. to... This has been done, you know. It isn't incidentally just my view. That is history. There are people who have tried okay. to corner the market repeatedly, right. and the result was that they went broke. L let me see if I understand you now. How do you... Ex see if this has got it. You're saying, in effect, that 
The oil companies have this power because we gave it to them. We gave it to them with our large cars that need a lot of gasoline. We gave, them, we gave it to them with, with our wasteful practices of energy. We have such a tremendous demand and need and reliance on oil that we, in effect, have given the people who, make, who produce the oil the power over us. No. <laughs> tell me, tell me how, where that's wrong. Because the oil producers are not the only people whom we patronize and not the only people who supply a need. The, even if, which I say if, it never happens, but let's suppose one oil man cornered the market, he has competition from every other industry who produce other things which we need. Therefore, we cannot give all the power to one company even if in a given field we patronize only that company. That company is competing with every other producer. And the moment you charge too much and somebody can give us the same product mm -hmm. uh, at a lower price, he'll put you right. out of business. Okay. You realize, of course, that your critics suggest that you just, that this is a pie in the sky, unpractical, notion that you're offering to us and that it sounds wonderful as you gather with the intellectuals at no. some university but it doesn't work out on the street quite the opposite it's in the universities that it doesn't work because all the leftist ideas and all the misrepresentation of capitalism come from leftist liberal professors the universities the universities are the real villains right. in the picture. Okay. All right. You want... Uh, but okay, I must make one slight postscript. I don't give a damn about my critics. You don't? Huh? No. 